Welcome to everyone uh, and joining, yeah, who is joining us for this evening session, at least here in Brussels. It's evening and it's getting darker slowly. Um, it's becoming a tradition that we've been doing at a few conferences now and some workshops to have a film screening or an art performance as part of the conference program. Something in relation to the topic of media migration and belonging, but which also allows the participants to engage with other kinds of storytelling, knowledge production and creativity. The idea behind such sessions is not only to do something else than having uh, scientific uh, uh, sessions, uh, parallel sessions and, and so on, as we know them from the traditional conferences, but of course also to bring the world of academia and the arts closer to each other as they are too often artificially divided. Especially when it comes to questions of belonging and identity, there is a great deal that we can learn from a dialogue between and a mixing of research and arts. And it's in this spirit that the Migrant Belongings Conference, um, we've, yeah, we have two such evening sessions, at least here it's evening, um, the film screening of Bab Septa tonight and the session on online and offline art in Migrant Belongings tomorrow. Uh, and I hope you will uh, join tomorrow uh, as enthusiastically as, as you're doing today. Tonight, we have the honor to watch the short film Bab Septa by Randa Marufi, who is also joining us for this session and for a Q&A. We are really glad you can be here with us tonight and, and look forward to watching the film together and to discuss it in light of the conference themes. In addition to this wonderful film, we were invited by the organizing team at Utrecht University to briefly tell something about a brand new project we are starting up here in Brussels. Um, and since we have only started in March, it was way too soon to present really findings about that project. But we'd like to introduce the project and the team as it also connects to the film that we are about to watch. The structure of this session is as follows. First, my colleague and filmmaker uh, Irene Gutierrez will introduce the film and the filmmaker and explain how you can watch it from your home computer because we will uh, use uh, sort of a trick to watch together separately. We hope uh, that will work. The film will then last about 20 minutes, after which we will give the floor to Randa for a presentation and to you, the audience, for a discussion. And after that, we'll present our project on borders and film, of course, hoping that we can yeah, reveal some links between a project on borders and film and a film about borders. So we hope uh, for a productive uh, dialogue between those uh, presentations. And then we hope to wrap up this session by uh, 8.30 uh, yeah, Amsterdam time. I will now share my screen for the introduction of the movie and give the floor to Irene. Thank you, Kevin, for your presentation. Uh, before watching the film, uh, let me just add a few words on Bad Septa, a multi-awarded short film made in 2019 by Randa Marufi, who is with us tonight. Good evening, Randa. Hello, thank you. Thank you, Irene and uh, Kevin and the whole team for, for this invitation. We have the pleasure of uh, having Randa here to discuss, uh, to discuss her film in a Q&A after the screening. And um, uh, regarding Bab Ceuta, uh, it is the Arabic name of Ceuta, a North African city under Spanish sovereignty in Morocco. Um, Bab Ceuta means the door of Ceuta or Ceuta's gate. Uh, when you go through that door, you enter Europe. Randa produced in a garage some of the daily situations that commonly take place in this border by turning it into a film studio. She focused on the parallel economy and the power struggles that happens in this geography, where the typical trade of small cross borders 
exchanging of all kinds, uh, moves more uh, an estimation of goods uh, worth about 500 millions that are imported by Ceuta to the neighboring country. Grandes Films represents this border by a flat theatrical surface in which uh, both the bodies under testimonies of the cross borders are in the core of the stage. By combining a ground camera with the use of a drone, she shows uh, the daily dynamics from a double point of view on a human scale and like the gaze of a cartographer or a Siberian helicopter. It allows to capture the movements of the camera and the people into a ritual ballet that remains the same choreographies of body control and extractive economy used during the colonial presence of Spain in North Africa. This reenactment that involves real smugglers becomes an epic of hidden stories of those who literally on their shoulders carry the legacy of being transborder citizens in a geopolitical and biopolitical site, which is Ceuta. And by the way, the city I was born and grew up. So for the screening, we have decided, uh, along with uh, uh, Randa and the organizers of the, the conference, that uh, we will share the video link uh, for you directly, just to avoid uh, hiccups, disturbing the flow, as well to improve the reproduction of the sound. So during the 19 minutes of the projection, we recommend you uh, to leave the session open in Zoom. Um, you can close if your connection is not uh, uh, white band, but uh, we, we recommend you to, to keep it uh, open and to meet again here in 19 minutes, which is the duration of Randa's film. Um, later on, I will introduce Randa um, and uh, you will have the floor for, for a Q&A to ask uh, the question that you like to ask her in the, um, in the topics of this conference, uh, Migrant Belongings. Well, I see all the comments. So everyone has seen the, the amazing film of Randa. Great. Um, well, I will present her uh, briefly, very briefly, and then I uh, think that the best thing that we can do if Kevin agrees is you to up your hands and yourself uh, can uh, do the questions. Uh, but if you prefer to write the questions in the chat, we, we can do it as well. Uh, it's up to you. Um, well, Randa Marufi is a visual artist and filmmaker born in Casablanca and based in Paris. She's a graduate of the National Institute of Fine Arts in Tetouan, Morocco, and the School of Fine Arts in Anjou, France, before obtaining her diploma in contemporary arts in the Center of Advanced Artistic, Audiovisual and Multimedia Training, Le Frecnois in France. Her works have been exhibited worldwide in museums and art venues, such as the Lincoln Center or the New Museum of New York, the Modern Art Museum of Quebec, the Vosian Foundation in Brussels, the Video Nail of Bonn, Germany, and the Art Biennales in Dakar, Marrakech, or Lebanon, among others. Her films Le Parc and Babseuta have received many awards and have been screened in film festivals such as Rotterdam, German Ferrand, Fit Marcel, Overhausen, or uh, the prestigious ITFA. Babseuta is now part of the exhibition Moroccan Trilogy in the Reina Sofia Museum, Spain, along with a significant selection of artworks created in Morocco for 70 years that show the intensity of artistic debate and the interdisciplinary exchange to be found in the neighbor country through a decolonial vision. Please, Randa, the floor is yours and feel free to add anything that uh, was missed in this presentation. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Irene, and thanks to all of you for your com comments. 
Um, so you, you did it very well <laughs> for my presentation. I will just uh, um, like make a very small presentation about my work as I'm, I work with video, but also with the photography installation and performance. Uh, my approach is influenced by social and political concerns and the field of my experiments extends from the occupation of public space to the question of gender of which I identify the mechanism of construction. My work is somewhere between documentary and fiction, and each of my projects is linked to a territory but transposable to others. The common point of my films is the staging of bodies in spaces. I try to show what this real or symbolic spaces do to bodies. In a few words, a place, people, and camera. So, yeah, please, we can maybe open a Q&A if you have any question. Uh, and sorry um, for my English. <laughs> if uh, I'm not clear, please don't hesitate to write me or uh, just correct me. Thank you. So I will just uh, add as well that uh, in this session, you can switch on your mic and or camera. Um, so you're able to, to ask a question yourself, but uh, please maybe first raise a hand or uh, notify in the chat uh, before you do so. Yeah, we have a uh, Tule Atai. Yeah. Um, hi everyone, hi Randa. Uh, uh, Hi from uh, Antakya by the Syrian border and I've been living in this city for like um, 23 years and since 2011 um, I've been witnessing the huge uh, migration of Syrian people in, in to Turkey. So your movie is just, um, I don't know how to describe it, but when it finished, I asked myself, that why it finished and uh, so thank you very much uh, i wish uh, there wasn't any migration uh, any refugee crisis and there wasn't this kind of movies and i my question is actually um I'm a um, movie lover, uh, but uh, the, the technique you used, um, uh, could you please explain uh, to us what kind of technique uh, you used? Thank you very much. Good evening from uh, Antioch. Thank you, Tulai. Thank you very much for your comment. Um, uh, about the technique, actually, the whole film was uh, shot uh, only with still shots. There is no movement camera in during the shooting. The, uh, all the movement camera were, were made in post-production. Uh, it was shooting like a very small space. It was a stu studio, um, it was a factor, all the factory of Mortadella. Uh, and I, it was like around 50 square meter. And uh, we just uh, put like car by car in this stage. And we had like two cameras, one uh, seven meter up from the, from the ground and uh, the other one seven meter uh, frontal one. And then it was like a patchwork. It was a compositing with each shot, with each still shot, and the, all the all the move, camera movement were uh, virtual. Thank you, Randa. Thank you, Tule. We have uh, another hands raised. Um, Miriam Abigail. Oh yes, hi. Hi Randa, thank you for this really inspiring and also beautiful movie. Um, I was wondering because in the end it says that you dedicate um, the film to your father. Um, and I was wondering, so perhaps this is really silly, but I always had this idea that that particular border was 
very much governed by the Spanish like um border patrol like so i mean so how does it work like between morocco and spain like how is it governed because i presume you are from the moroccan side so <laughs> i'm sorry i i didn't get uh, what is the question because we were talking about that i dedicate the film to my father right and yeah. then yeah, and, and it says something that your father worked for the border patrol. Yeah, so I was wondering, like, how is the sort of governance of the border in between the sort of Spanish army and uh, and the Moroccan army? So, actually, um, my my father was not uh, working in the border of Ceuta. He was working ah. in the Sahara, uh, in the south of Morocco, in the in some airports, but. I, I dedicate this project, this film, to my father because, uh, for me, it, it is important to talk about this uh, anecdotic part of. Uh, yeah. You know. No, for sure. That's why I was very fascinated by it. Because he was a custom, actually, but uh, yeah, in other uh, airports. But many, many people from my family work uh, in the north of Morocco in this field as well as in transit, uh, import and export and so on. So custom slangs, uh, slang often uh, occurred in our family meetings. So I remember that uh, we even uh, used goods from custom seizures. So I grew up with this, uh, yeah, in this, um, yeah, in my family. And also I, I, uh, I, um, I lived for several years in, in, in Tetuan and Tangier, uh -huh. and I was so very uh, yeah, marked by the Spanish influence in, in this region that we can find in the, uh, in the regional dialect, uh, the way of living, and especially in the culture of uh, consumption. Yeah, it's very interesting. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Miriam and Sandra. Go ahead. Hi, Randa. Thank you so much for sharing this wonderful experience. Uh, I felt it like an experience. I felt like uh, living the space that you created. And it was uh, impressive as a cinematography, but also the organization of the visuality that you have this idea of uh, a space which looks quite big. And I'm surprised it was a mortadella factory as an Italian can imagine this idea of being sausaged in a small place. It's a kind of good metaphor for the film that you try to to make, but this idea of the like a cartography that you're creating in a very little space in which bodies are not in motion, but are like laid out for immobility. And at the same time, because of the colors and the geometry, you create a kind of humorous and peaceful uh, and hopeful uh, rendition of the situation. So it feels claustrophobic and then at the same time, very uh, dynamic, which is uh, incredible for the kind of images uh, and the resources that you have, which I guess were not very limited. So more of a compliment than a question for the originality of your, of your take. And I was curious to know how you recruited your participants and how you train them and what do they make of your experiment, let's say, experimental cinema. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, so um, I actually, in 2015, I, I started this project in 2015 in, in the frame of an artist residency in Tetuan uh, called Trancat. I was just uh, going back uh, by walking during like three weeks or four or one month, just observing what happens in the border. And in 2015, I've met two women, uh, Nabila and Kiltum. Uh, they are smugglers working in the border of Oskita. And I asked them if uh, I can film, uh, the, uh, film them in a studio uh, just to like experiment what happened if, uh, if uh, I just raise like uh, the, the border or we will have only their body. And Nabila and Kiltum were actually um, they had a different roles in, in the production of the film. They were like stage managers, casting director, actress. 
and um, so I spend a lot of time with their families. I spend a lot of time with uh, the families of other uh, women smugglers, and um, yeah, I uh, it was uh, I never actually when I work uh, uh, when I would like when I want to produce uh, to make a film. I don't uh, I I never have my camera with me. I just uh, like spend time and talking and maybe just taking picture with my phone. And um, yeah, uh, and Nabila and Kultum was like for me, uh, yeah, to, we, we spend a lot of time together. We get like a, a kind of a trust. They trust uh, my, uh, my project on my project, but also they were from the beginning they told me that we will work together and uh, it must to be like uh, very professional between us and uh, also i um, in uh, we we shoot in in Azlite, in a, it's a very small village uh, near to Tituan. and um, the i the inhabitants of this village also participate in in the figura figuration of the film because it was uh, important for me that they they uh, they were part of the project uh, as we arrived to their territory with like trucks cars and the equipment and uh, for me they had to be integrated in, in and and uh, yeah it, it was very important to to know what we are doing in their territory and they participate in what we are trying to do uh, so uh, how I work with people is like taking time to just talk about the project, talk about life, not necessary projects, to talk about um, the Nebula and Kultum, for example, they helped me a lot to write some stuff that I could not know it, know it because I tried to, for example, in the in in Ceuta, I tried to go to to go out of the Ceuta, but with the group of smugglers and they arrested me. Uh, they know well that I'm, that I'm in the Guardia Civil. They know that they am not smuggler. Uh, so uh, what happened in this uh, uh, parkour between, uh, um, between Ceuta and Morocco, I was just doesn't, don't know what happened there and they were just describing to me and their voice, uh, when they were describing uh, the border, for example, or how they, uh, how uh, they, they, what is, for example, the, uh, why, how they use the border. I was just writing, or they were uh, um, um, drawing, uh, and uh, the also the voice is the voice that I use for the film. So to respond to your question, it's uh, more, than, more of than I asked for. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. And uh, we have a question of Lisa Marie. Yes, um, thank you, Rene. Randa, I would like to ask about the emphasis on the merchandise during the film. I'm not so well familiar to what's the difference between for them to cross with the merchandise attached to their bodies or How's the benefit for it? And who's getting the benefit of this merchandise that has been uh, moving between borders? What or why is there so much emphasis during the film on the merchandise? Because since the beginning, they are uh, working on it, attaching it to their bodies. And then when they finally cross, they still do it with it. And at the end, they're opening it. So I just wanted to know uh, where is the importance or the profit and to whom for them to cross the border with it? So actually, there is a wholesaler in uh, in uh, in Ceuta and wholesaler in Morocco. And when smugglers uh, come from Morocco and they go to Ceuta, they 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 can be uh, them. Uh, for example, Nabila and Kultum, they were smugglers, but they were they were also wholesaler. Um, so they. Uh, get this uh, merchandise around their body and they uh, from Ceuta and then they go to to Morocco um, to to their to their um, they have like um, sorry 
they have like hangar mm -hmm. in, 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 in Morocco, but other, other uh, smugglers, they were just, they use their body as a, as a, as a way of transport, as transporter. So I'm not yeah. sure if they... No, that Randa was right. Uh, as soon as the, mer the all the goods are transported by feet, it can be entered. Uh, they can be entered to Morocco without paying taxes. Without paying and, taxes. Exactly, yeah. and this kind of irregular, uh, you know, way of uh, income of Ceuta and Morocco, and uh, there are people. Randa, she will know that uh, people did this like uh, having 3,000 euros daily for this uh, irregular trade uh, daily, 3,000 3, euros daily. So it's a big business, not, as, not for the smugglers uh, as uh, for it sure. It can be also for the smugglers. Actually, it's, it's something, it's not legal, it's not illegal, it's informal because uh, or, or everybody knows what happened. When uh, Ceuta, uh, when Spain, uh, yeah, they decide to, to close the border, they will close it just to say that uh, this border could not uh, be only for economic uh, staff. Uh, uh, then sometimes it's, uh, yeah, the, it's not very clear the, the, the statue of, uh, of this uh, merchandise, uh, but um, it can be uh, for the whole seller, but also for smugglers. Sometimes, if it is drugs, uh, it can be like around uh, one thousand euro for the smuggler for, per day. But it can be also ten euro if they take only uh, like uh, a gar garbage or like a uh, uh, plastic. It's kind of uh, they they make uh, recyclage, make like uh, recyc recycling. Uh, kind of uh, recycle recycling stuff too yeah <laughs> they can have like only 10 euros yeah, yeah but it, it, it really depends of the the what uh, which kind of merchandise it is yeah it's, it's kind of wall street strained wall street there so sometimes the package was like 70 euros sometimes it's 200 euros so it, it's a kind of strange in, internal. So we have a, a, a little bit uh, like two more questions and maybe um, uh, I will read some of the questions uh, writing in the chat. Um, um, thank you for this great film. It's a question of Darshana. I was wondering if you can talk a bit about the soundtrack of the film. Was it sourced from people who are moving between the two borders? Darshana is not here, I think, so she, she left. But uh, anyway, it's a good question. <laughs> okay, so there is many layers of the sound. There is the real sound in, the, in Ceuta. There is sound from YouTube. Uh, there is sound of, there is uh, like um, sound of drones and some stuff like this. It doesn't exist in Ceuta. You don't, you don't have a drone or this helicopter, the sound. It's like, totally fiction. Uh, there is also, um, like a voiceover from uh, of the smugglers and voiceover of uh, my cousin who was also were also a smuggler there, and uh, there is a voiceover of my uh, the uh, of someone from my family who who was a, a custom in Melilla, and uh, I actually wrote uh, like uh, Melilla is also an island enclave in in a Spanish enclave in in uh, Morocco. I, I wrote like a text uh, inspired uh, from uh, um, like an interview I found in, in, in I found in in YouTube, an interview between a, a, a custom and someone, and uh, so I I write this text and I give it to my uh, to this uh, person from my family to to uh, act it. But when I was uh, recording him, he was uh, telling me some stories happened in Melilla. So then in the editing, I took some real uh, testimonies and other 
fake testimonies. So there, there is many, many layers of sound. And there is also this uh, Spanish uh, voice. It's um, a friend I wanted uh, like some Spanish voice with this uh, Madridan accent from Madrid. And uh, this Spanish voice uh, doesn't have a statue very, uh, th 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 she have a statue very fragile because uh, uh, sometimes you can, um, you can think that she's a, a member of the authorities, uh, Spanish authorities. Sometimes she said that even if, uh, even for me, I was working like here uh, more than 13 years old and I'm a bit lost. And in the end, she's telling that once they arrested her, I wanted to give to this voice, Spanish voiceover a statue is very fragile and not clear at all. But also, it's a, it's a, the the it's a narrative way uh, to she, she just we it's like we were with her uh, in in the, for in the helicopter or something like this, and she's showing to us what happened in in, in Ceuta. Yeah. Maybe we have just time for another last question. So there were some uh, members of the audience uh, talking about dog beer for of uh, by Lan Lasborn Triers, which was one of the your inspiring films, as I read in an interview. So they were right uh, on finding these uh, inspirations. Uh, well, um, so the last question it's. Um, um, yeah, it's talking about this uh, uh, cinematic gaze of the uh, point of view of the cameras um, and um, about uh, the camera angles that you used and the map that was used uh, in the end in the visual presentation. So the point of view actually, the, 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 yeah, as you, you see, watch the film was shot in two different points of view. Uh, the zenithal and frontal one, and the choice of uh, of this point of view, uh, the zenith point of view, for me seems important, uh, adequate, and fairer to analyze the subject or topic related to the separation of uh, two territories. It also allows me to to realize the cartographic dimension of of this uh, film. It also can recall uh, the architecture, the topography, and the monitoring. Um, and the frontal uh, traveling allowed me to, to obtain some the delicacy of the details and the situation, but also to leave a place to the human figure and reveal the faces. Um, yeah, it, and the last, uh, the last, uh, map it's a map from google maps that i just uh, yeah i just uh, change lines how, uh, to to put for example cars uh, that i shoot there is it's totally uh, fiction it's inspired from google maps but it's totally something uh, there is no uh, uh, sorry there is no ladder uh, or scales. I just try to, yeah, to 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 have something totally uh, fiction, but also a, a kind of uh, of a game. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and also you mentioned in an interview that uh, in the real border, these testimonies and these bodies are not the main. The principal thing, but in your film you were you were able to extract them to be in the core of the scenario of the center to make them protagonists, and also uh, there is a difficulty, a real difficulty to to sh to record in that border. Like uh, now, it's uh, the permissions, authorizations are not so <laughs> easy. So it's impossible to do it. Like I, I it's uh, totally impossible. And then for me, it was like. Uh, important to not there is yeah it's forbidden to 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 film how i uh, in the way I, how i film it 
but also I wanted to give like a value to uh, to the bodies that they don't have in the landscape because of the architecture of the yeah, all what we have around around this body we could not uh, yeah for me put it was very theater theater uh, and I chose the black uh, like a black um, uh, uh, Say stage courting stage yes to to just have these bodies and and colors uh, uh, to give them a value. Thank you, Randa, for this wonderful theme and the, this amazing Q and A it was very uh, generous from your side, and I hope to see more of your works uh, in in very soon. Um, Thank you. I'm and sorry. I, I've seen that there is also many questions. I'm sorry, if, please don't hesitate to write me if you want to discuss more by email or, or what you want, uh, because uh, yeah, we can discuss it uh, with pleasure. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll join, of course, Irene in thanking you, uh, Ramna, for this very generous uh, response to the questions. and. Indeed, uh, I, I suggested we collect maybe the questions that came in the chat or that will come in and that we somehow try to uh, yeah, deliver them to you or um, maybe continue this conversation. Um, if you stay with us for a few more minutes, we have uh, also some something more to share, uh, which is um, a research project that happens to connect uh, to this uh, wonderful mm -hmm. film. And, and very powerful film indeed. Um, I think you can see the slides now. Yes. Um, yes, it, it, this is um, a very fresh uh, project that we started in March. Uh, and when I say we, I'm referring to myself as the coordinator, but also uh, Irene uh, Gutierrez, who you already met here, uh, Silvia Almenara Niebla and uh, Leonard Soberon, who is also here in the, who are also here in the session. Uh, so I'm also yeah, uh, speaking on their behalf. And I, I think this film, uh, Randa, it couldn't have made it more clear that the, the border has yeah, a very real and tangible material uh, dimension that we yeah, can witness daily and that different people can do, experience in very unequal and different ways. Uh, these materialities, but at the same time, borders also have a strong uh, symbolic uh, imaginative dimension. And I guess this, this project tries to sort of situate itself at the crossroads where these two dimensions meet, the, the symbolic and the material. Um, and, and that idea is hopefully reflected well in the title of the project, Real Borders how borders are imagined through film. And what we will try to do in this uh, project, which is a, a five-year uh, project funded by the, the ERC, is to try to understand how film has been used to imagine borders in the past 120 years, because obviously borders have not always been what they are today. And it's it. I think it's really um, valuable to look back at uh, the past decade or so. And so we will really look um, to the very start of film as a mass medium uh, more than 120 years ago and look how it has been used to imagine borders. And as reflected in the title of the project as well, the blurred boundaries between fiction and nonfiction will be, um, yeah, where, where we will try to situate the project. So we will really embrace that complexity of fiction versus nonfiction that we see so often. And that was also, I think, uh, really echoing in Randa's uh, film. Uh, very briefly, we will look in Real Borders um, at how films are used to imagine borders through the perspective of different actors including governments, intergovernmental institutions, artists, activists, uh, and migrants and border lenders. Or, or with border lenders, we try to refer to people who witness 
experience um, the border in all its facets in, in their daily lives. And we will do that uh, through a number of, of methods from ranging from film analysis to looking at yeah, production, uh, ethnographic analyses, uh, interviews, but also, um, and this is probably what we're all most excited about uh, in this early stage of the project, is the participatory filmmaking where we will um, try to create uh, films together with uh, participants um, about how they are experiencing borders. And to, to make this more concrete, uh, we will go to three borders or three regions, uh, more specifically the Turkish-Syrian border. Uh, we already had uh, Tulay uh, speaking from the Turkish-Syrian border uh, earlier, um, which was, was great to hear you. Um, the Irish-UK uh, border uh, and the Suta and Melilla border um, connecting to the uh, film as well. Um, obviously, three really different uh, situations, but also um, yeah, ongoing transformations and continuous um, conflicts around these uh, borders make it uh, quite fascinating to turn to, to these cases, we believe. In this slide, this is not yet representative, but um, to give you an idea of what we've already been collecting uh, so far, we've been able to identify uh, at least 120 movies dealing with these different borders um, spanning over uh, different decades uh, and many different genres. And we hope to share this uh, database and, and a mapping of it with you uh, at another occasion. Um, this presentation is also a little bit uh, selfishly <laughs> from our side, uh, a call to you in the audience if you happen to know any interesting movies, any interesting filmmakers or other projects, um, you, um, you are invited to uh, let us know and uh, we will be really grateful because we're really at the stage now where we're uh, trying to learn a lot uh, of the different movies and filmmakers that have worked on these borders. And I already briefly uh, mentioned their names, but here you see everyone's um, picture as well. Um, I didn't men mention uh, Yazan Badran yet, but he's also uh, on the project uh, starting from September. And that uh, gives us a uh, very um, yeah, multidisciplinary and, and a wonderful team. Uh, I have to mention also that besides the, the uh, core members at the VUB, we will be working with partners in Adana, in Belfast, and in Suta Melilla campus of the University of Granada, as well as with um, um, the Cinematheque, the Royal uh, Belgian Film Archive. This was the last slide and I will stop here. Um, so, oh no, there, there was one more slide, I think. Yes, um, indeed, our website is coming soon. We had hoped to already share it with you here, but uh, it's not finished yet, but hopefully very soon. Uh, our Twitter account does work. Um, you can start following it and hopefully we'll be able to fill it with content uh, soon. So please don't hesitate to get in touch if you have um, yeah, interesting insights or would like to collaborate in the future. We're uh, very uh, much looking forward to that. I will leave the slide for just a second and we'll try to turn to the chat. I saw things happening there. Um, okay, while we wrap up the session, I would uh, like to thank uh, from the bottom of my heart uh, Randa for joining us for this session and, and for um, yeah, for being with us, for sharing this important film with us. I'm sure that the film will also become part of uh, our own research, so I look forward to continue this uh, conversation. And of course, uh, thank you very much to the organizers of the Migrant Belongings Conference and to all the audience members uh, joining here tonight.
thanks to you too and to everybody for your time and your questions. Thank you, Kevin and team. And Miranda, everyone. Thank you for having us. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Thank you.